The destruction of the Athenian Empire is a result of two massive wars between Athens and Sparta. We know them as the Peloponnesian Wars. You may remember that the Spartans usually tried to stop the growth of other powerful states in Greece as a part of their traditional foreign policy. Thus, they viewed the growth of the Athenian power with alarm, and they eventually led to the outbreak of hostilities. At almost every, uh, by the time the war is over, almost every state in the Greek world was involved in one side or another. On the Athenian side, the wars don't go well because the assembly made all the decisions. In a time of crisis, it was difficult to make consistent policies when everybody had to be consulted by them. If Pericles had lived, Athens might have won. But he dies in 429, and later Athenian leaders were not as capable as, Athe as Pericles. The greatest Spartan problem was that Athens controlled the seas. By the Second War, it became evident that Sparta had to have a navy in order to defeat the Athenians. So in 412, Sparta made a deal with the Persians. They'll return, the Persian, they'll return to Persia the Ionian cities in exchange for money to help to get the ships. And that's exactly how Spartan wins out. The destruction of the political power of the polis was much more gradual. Like great conflicts, the Peloponnesian Wars disillusioned many of the Greeks that lived in them. The, the Greeks once believed that the loyalty to a polis was the most important feeling a man could have. But now they were saying that such loyalty could lead to terrible destruction. After 404, loyalty to the state is replaced by more personal concerns and interests. Moreover, the example which Athens had, had set was an invasion for, uh, sorry, an invitation for others to create similar empires based on alliances in the Aegean. Following the war, Sparta, for example, abandons her conservative foreign policy, forcing other city-states to in a one-sided alliance with her. In the 370s, another polis, Thebes, tries the same thing. These efforts at imperialism provoked wars, and there was constant warfare in Greece from 404 to 338 BC. No single city-state had the men or the resources to achieve any sort of permanent hegemony over the city-states of Greece. All of these conflicts were to did was to drain the resources of the city-states and make them vulnerable to aggression, uh, particularly against other, state, other, other Greek states with more centralized forms of government. In the 400s, the Greek polis system, exemplified by the highly successful Athenian polis, reached its height. But by the end of that century, both Athens and the polis had gone into, into decline. At its highest point, Athens was probably the, had come the closest to achieving the theoretical objectives the polis had for any other city-state. In government, it achieved a system in which all citizens could participate in on equal footing and as close to it as possible. I might say that the citizens made up more than half of the population. Athens also achieved extraordinary heights of intellectual expression, which we'll be talking about later. Of course, Athens also became an the first Greek imperial power in the same period, extending her power at the expense of others. Many modern writers find this imperialism hard to reconcile with the achievements of, Ath of Athens, but they go hand in hand. It's the same loyalties and ambitions that made the Athenians excel in intellectual and political pursuits also made them want to dominate other cities. It was this drive for supremacy that eventually brought Athens and the polis to an end. Historians sometimes criticize the Greeks for not finding a way to unify their diverse cities into a political system based on the polis. Why, they ask, couldn't the Greeks build a Greece-wide state, which all Greeks participated on, on an equal basis? This was not possible if you look closer. In order for the Greeks to participate in the government in the manner of the polis, the Greek state had to be small. In Greece, the right of the citizen did not stop with the right to vote. The citizen had to be able to participate directly in the system, directly into the polis, to sit in the assembly, hold office. In such a system, the number of citizens had to be limited.